thank you for letting me into your world. Thank you for letting me into your world. Today, I'm going to talk about the greater astrological events surrounding September all the way down to December. And so we are going to touch upon what will happen or what could happen as a better word. So you can actually have an overview of what to do and how to progress with your day to day from an astrological point. First, I would like to speak upon Pluto. Pluto, which is the planet of transformation, destruction, and uh, complete change. It is brutal. Um, it is the highest octave of Mars, which is very active, as we know. So Pluto has moved into Capricorn, which represents the government. Capricorn is the government. Pluto is change, but it's brutal change. Pluto moved into the sign of Capricorn in around February this year. It has now been retrograde, however, um, since around then. And it's gone back a sign, which is Sagittarius, which governs traveling, right? And it governs um, some form of change in relationship to traveling on a global level. It has affected many people. Now, Pluto is also known as the shadow planet. It is the shadow planet because it represents the underdog, the underworld. It is, in essence, the dog star. It is the foreseer and the preparationer of all major changes. And this is the planet that I want to kind of stress upon with you in relationship to the other planets which are personal. Pluto is a generational planet, so it, it affects us on a mass level. So Pluto also represents secrets, secret societies. Now, when they speak about the shadow government, right, you know, these are the people playing around behind um, what is happening, such as these conspiracy kind of uh, names that they give, like um, the New World Order. These are key tools, how you can maneuver astrologically and see those inner hidden societies so pluto represents that now that you know that pluto has completed a cycle it takes 500 years but around the time when pluto was in capricorn it was all the way in the 17th 1776 during the time when they set up the new world order or they prepared for it around that time prior to that there was the Industrial Revolution, which, um, which kicked off around that century. And that involved uh, a new form of transport, transportation. This, this was just before Pluto had moved into the sign of Capricorn, which is the government. It was in Sagittarius, which is the sign of traveling. And so during the Industrial Revolution, um, throughout America and, you know, um, the UK, we had um, all these farmers which went into the cities to look for work. We had communities breaking away slowly and moving into the cities, traveling. You know, this is when transportation became massive. It changed the world in, in so many words. So that opened up many gates. By the time that Pluto had moved into, into Capricorn, the whole world had changed, you know. People were moving into this new world, right? And um, this is exactly what is happening today. Pluto is moving into Capricorn, which represents the government. And that is occurring, which is creating a greater effect on our economy. And when it went in there, Around March, it affected the economy. While everyone was focused on coronavirus, people were not focusing on the economy. And so this is where the underlying force is directing us to. And most people ain't watching those little kind of mini movements. Now, so this month is going to be very interesting. Why? September, because Jupiter which is the planet which governs traveling, 
is at home. It's retrograde, but it's moving forward. So things are going to be moving towards the brighter side. However, Jupiter will be entering its well, the sign of debilitation, which is the worst placement for Jupiter, which governs traveling, knowledge, truth, beliefs. People have this inner belief that things are going to be okay. Things are going to be okay. But Jupiter is moving back into Capricorn, which is not a good placement for Jupiter, which is the planet which is affected also traveling, actually, on the personal level. So many people had to cancel their trips. That's due to Jupiter in Capricorn. Now that it's moved into Sagittarius, it's like it gives greater hope, but it's going back into the sign of Capricorn, which is a sign forward. So that what's that? What is that going to do? It's going to affect us again on a level of traveling, right? But before it, it gets even there, it's not going to go there until late November, I think, or December. What we want to focus on is Mars. Why? Well, Mars is forward, but it's about to go retrograde in a few days. And um, when Mars goes retrograde, people are going to be restless. If you're already feeling restless right now, the, the energy is going to just become more rest, restless, even worse. You know, it's going to be agitated. When Mars is retrograde, it's like all this fiery energy goes internally. So it's almost like you don't know what you're doing you're just kind of just firing up and this leads you up all the way to the elections on november the third in america so november the third is the day when mars moves forward and that is the day of the elections so this is going to create a kind of rumble effect on people's mentalism right so um you know driving towards the election this is just a possibility. There may not be a government on the 3rd of November. Actually, I wanted to say something. During the last um, great conjunction, which is happening in December, which I'm going to go into in a moment, right, is about the end of this cycle in so many words. During um, the last great conjunction between um, Saturn and Jupiter, right it's a it's a particular alignment of two planets it only happens once every so often during the last retro during the last conjunction kennedy was in pre presidency and uh, obviously he was assassinated so there's a there's an interconnection between what's happened in the stars previously and the correlationship with how it will manifest but in a different way so i wanted to kind of stress this in so Obviously, the election's on the 3rd of November. So there's going to be some kind of, um, a lot of stress and tension walking towards there, right? What, what tops it up is on September the 30th, Saturn, which governs the government, is going forward. Now, the reason why people have been able to protest, and I'm just saying this, the reason why people have been able to kind of go wild and just do all these things is because of Saturn being retrograde. And so it affects the government and it affects how you make decisions. So this is one of the key reasons that during that time, there were no particular, though the rules were strict, the, the rules have been opened. So it's almost like, you know, people can do kind of what they want, but not really what they want. But coming closer to September the 30th, there might be some new rules in place actually 29th 30th pay attention to those dates because there may be some new rules and regulations in place and this may affect how perhaps you travel or you know certain laws that may be put in place during that time because saturn now is moving forward again so they might implement new structures implement new laws now obviously you got the black lives matter which has been also ongoing and all of that was a was an attack um against uh, obviously the, the virus by switching it and making it personal and, and uh, directing it to a particular race. So by doing that, they create rituals which are directing how they want this thing to occur. Whatever ritual or plans they have in place, this is all part of their 
agenda, which is all connected to the economy and how they control the mass population. Okay, so that's key one. Now, obviously, November the 3rd, pay attention. September the 30th, because it governs Cap, um, Saturn and it's to do with our structure and how we structure ourselves, this is the time to, to really get into a form of discipline. Um, you know, right now it should be about realigning all these elements inside of you to get into a natural discipline so you can overcome anything that is to come, you know. Um, so obviously there might be a second pandemic. This is, a, this is just another layer piece of the cake because obviously they've been programming that into people's consciousness so then people can think about that and contemplate about that and it's a form of hypnosis, mind programming, which is taking form. So that's another thing because that governs that Saturnian energy. So they've allowed things to move while it's been retrograde. Whenever a planet is retrograde, it just it just opens up. Basically, it lets anything happen. Anything could happen. So a loss of structure is what you know Capricorn represents. So it's like there's a loss of structure. Now Saturn's going to be moving forward. So then there's going to be a, a more of a resistant kind of theme going through. Perhaps some kind of martial law kind of implementation. Who knows? Whatever it is. All I can do is speculate, but I can open up what the possibilities of the planetary events are trying to say. This is how I'm uh, breaking it down from an astrological point of view. So then um, coming closer towards um, uh, the end of the year, which is very important, you know, as Jupiter moves forward, uh, Mars goes retrograde. So it's almost like the sense of belief, like, yes, we're moving forward, but then Mars moves backward, moves backwards. So everyone's kind of acting like a bit skiddy. So that happens around the 12th to the 15th kind of um, of September. So it's an interesting month this month. Interesting month. All of these things can be very subtly felt. Now, coming closer to the end of this year, which is the great cycle or, or the greater event, we have the great conjunction. And the great conjunction is when Jupiter finally moves has moved forward from September and Saturn has moved forward from September, um, end of September, and they come to meet each other in December in this great conjunction, which has a major effect on our on our global economy as well as our, as our global structure. Why? Because Jupiter governs our, our sense of a law of attraction. It governs how much we attract. And Saturn governs our structure and how much do we put into place now let me put this forward for many of you to understand and contemplate this astrologically as well as globally saturn represents the final say jupiter is law however saturn represents the final statement or the final say so when these two planets come together they will meet at a particular degree, which is exactly at four degrees sidereal traditional true astrological time in the sign of Capricorn. What this means, it's that it's going to meet in the sign of structuring. And Jupiter, of course, as I said before, is going to be in its, in its worst placement, but it hits its worst placement at the fourth degree around its debilitation and then pow, Something occurs around the 19th of December, which we will basically witness or hear about. During this same segment of time, the sun in the sky with Mercury, which deals with information. So Mercury is about information, whether it's the news or whatever. And the sun is also going to be in the same placement, which is going to speak about a particular important information or message that needs to be said to the world so whatever it might be it's going to make a shift into our way of viewing life so it could be it could be a time of great depression it could be also a time of greater opportunities remember prior to this transit in the sky with pluto and i'm going to join pluto into this because pluto goes back into capricorn in december now Remember what I said, Pluto creates transformation, change. Um, and, it's, and, and Pluto is the last planet which goes into Capricorn. So you've got Saturn, you've got Jupiter, which creates this great conjunction, which creates a pool of structure 
and steadiness, but a pull also of expansion. So it's almost like there's an expansion of restriction being placed on the mass, on the world, perhaps. Perhaps a restriction in some sort. Perhaps some economical restriction because Capricorn is the last earth sign. Remember, Taurus represents our first source of finances and security. Virgo, which is the second earth sign, represents our what we reap. Hence why we, you know, it, 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 it's governed by the corn. It, it's about what you reap. You reap what you sow. And then Capricorn is finally the greater structure, which is the final earth sign, which governs greater resources, which governs the collective consciousness, which also governs the government, but also how you govern yourself personally. So when those two planets meet, Jupiter expanding, Saturn constricting, it's going to create this kind of resilient energy or whatever it might be. But Pluto then meets it a few days afterwards, around December the 21st, Interestingly, December 21st, Pluto meets it and jumps into Capricorn. We are talking about sidereal astrology, true genuine astrology. It falls into Capricorn and then transformation takes place. So remember, Pluto also represents resources, money, how you connect resources with other people, ties with other people. Uh, it represents resistance deep transformation it represents shiva or cyrus it represents this kind of um uh energy so basically all of that is going to take place around december the 21st 2020 2000, 2020 sorry so basically this is what's going to occur around that time so we are going going to probably perhaps notice some kind of drastic change in, in so many words. So, personally speaking, what happened around February, around, um, you know, the world, was a preparation for this time in December, which is what I'm seeing. And, you know, perhaps nothing could happen, you know, but something could happen. And obviously, there, there has been speculations and understandings that obviously this year is the, the year what we call 2012. Some say it's the new age because in Western astrology, this is when Jupiter and Saturn meet on December in Aquarius. So according to Westerners and however you guys view astrology, that shows up in your segments. However, I look at it from the, the, the truest heavens so I can see it's affecting Earth and that's why we're going in that position. Now, What's very interesting about that day as well, from the 19th to the 20th, Pluto, which is the generational planet of transformation, is squaring Mars, which is the lowest octave of Pluto. Remember, Mars and Pluto are same forces, but one is high octave, Pluto, and one is lower octave, Mars. So that creates a personal transformation for everybody in some ways. So it creates this kind of a mystical tension so <clears throat> whatever might it be it's going to create a, a major effect on um you know the world economy i believe so because pluto has resources and um you know there's there's that change going there and obviously pluto is also watery but also martian you know so it's like oh i will i will resist to that change but i am going to have to accept the change remember capricorn deals with nature and it, it deals with nature in its highest state so um saturn is in capricorn for the next two years which is a slow moving planet and it's going to create this major change on all of us and how we deal with the world you know so it's going to create this change because nature is kind of taking its wings and really um rearranging how we believe life uh, well, it is rearranging how life should be. And our perception now is going to be how we deal with it afterwards. So in essence, let us go to the core essence of this transformation taking form throughout this year. How will your business be affected? Uh, I'm looking at it from this point of view. How will your work be affected? I'm looking at that point of view. What will you do? How will you survive? Will you work with communities? If there was something to kick off, how will you deal with the, the uh, current event? Will you be looking into moving into 
uh, more of the internet structure? Or would you be moving into building communities and moving out of the lands? How well would you be able to deal with the, um, the, the struggles that may appear or come during this time? Would you still believe in the mundane form of living? Do you think that this is the only way? Or would you consider perhaps uh, having a different perception on how and what life can be? Because anything can change at any moment, but it's how it changes. Remember, Capricorn has a planet, which, um, sorry, Saturn has a planet, um, which is also um, Uranus, which governs the same sign, Capricorn and Uranus. Well, well, sorry, I should say um, Aquarius, which is obviously the greater cycle, which is everyone is waiting for. Um, all these um, spiritualists into the new age system. Everyone's waiting for this great Aquarian age and they expect that it's going to be lovely, jubbly and everything's just going to be amazing and everything. Yes, we are moving into a new cycle, but we don't know when this cycle is. You know, astrologically speaking, we can only speculate. We can see what's happening. We can see we've moved into a greater cycle, but it's a transition. It's not just going to happen overnight, you know. To begin with, all, all the, like, the universe started when all the planets were in the sign of Aries, right? And now the planets have moved all different placements, you know. And, and so these effects are made on the subconscious levels, on the subconscious level. <clears throat> so pay attention to this. That makes a great difference. To, to how things are affected. Now, um, probably one of the greatest cycles that ever happened when when all the planets were in the exaltation space, meaning their best placements. Uh, it, it, it may have been one of the greatest times astrologically. But the age of Aquarius um, going into that is the, the age of when the kings are coming back. I don't, and I won't say that the kings are going to be there but the kings are coming back that's what i call aquarius the kings are back in the age of capricorn in my personal opinion because capricorn is the the sign of initiation and it's the and it's also the the the, the sign of the christ the coming of the christ which is interesting right because it's to be crucified capricorn represents the highest heights and aquarius is is the highest heights after the highest so once you reach the height, there's a higher height above that. So this is why we're moving into that initiation stage. So, you know, in another 2000 years from now, you know, there's going to be a greater cycle, which is where I'm looking more forward to looking to. The Aquarian Age is, is almost like a, a, it's electricity in the ocean, electricity in water. So obviously, if you, if you would like to know how this cycle of events are going to affect you throughout the next few months and perhaps throughout the next two years, then feel free to uh, book a reading with me and I can look into how uh, these planets are going to affect you and create major changes for you and how perhaps the planet Saturn and Jupiter are going to create an open and closureness and how and where it's going to be in your natal birth chart, you know, so we can look into that kind of thing. But beyond that, um, obviously the age of Aquarius is about a new beginning, a new form of way of living and a perception of living. You know, Aquarius represents electricity. Why? Because it's the, it's the, it's the electricity that's in the ocean that's being, that's being reawoken. So the, the water is being wakened, wakened by the electrical current, which is the waves. The waves represent the thoughts moving in the ocean. So the waves are the thoughts moving in the ocean and are literally penetrating your psyche and allowing you to uh, think for yourself, individually for yourself, which is the waves. And um, of course, Aquarius is the final air sign which represents balance in its true format as opposed to Libra. Libra gets balanced by other signs. Aquarius is balanced because it balances Gemini and Libra together and it's the final triad which formulates the formation of air which is mentalism in its highest depth at that point when thought has reached its highest depth which is connected to the internet and the collective consciousness connected to the internet it then materializes into a, a concrete form which is capricornian capricornian is an earth element and so therefore means this 
uh, uh, AI kind of technology that everyone is kind of just, well, um, you know, kind of talking about this robotic kind of matrix is all about this integration forming itself, perhaps, and creating a new robotic consciousness in the age of Capricorn. Now, we can mimic this and see how the mind is operating naturally. The mind is a robotic scheme. We wake up at the same time if we go to sleep at around the same time. We also um, do things based upon habits. Therefore means the computer is a matrix, which is a computer within itself. Where did it start? We don't know. However, when we use technology, we are integrating a new form. And it's almost like we are allowing a new integration to become a part of this robotic structure. And therefore means if we, not, if we do not observe the Aquarian age in its correct format, it can become a part of our intellectual uh, material thinking process as opposed to the natural thinking process which comes from the intellect. Therefore means it's better to structure yourself by writing things as opposed to typing things, connecting with the, the, the internal matrix that your, your, um, your body was created to function. Remember your physical body is your meditation. Your physical awareness in this state is your meditation which allows you to evolve to other states. Therefore means the moment you get trapped into technology, which is the, 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 the anti-process of the Aquarian Age, is the moment that the programming takes form inside of you. So this is how you end up taking the um, what we call the, the mask of the beast by, by basically integrating and allowing everything to be dictated for you and then governed and then formed into a structure or a placement of belief. So be very wise and be very gentle and observe your psychology and how you deal with the world. Otherwise, we may end up in another cycle. Remember, history repeats itself based upon how planetary meet each other once again. So let us not meet each other in that same position. Let us change realities. Let us create a new paradigm. Let us not get dictated by the powers that be. Let us reconnect to our true potential, our truest force, and our truest form. Thank you for letting me into your world. Thank you for letting me into your world.